All righty. So continuing where we picked up yesterday, or continuing where we left off yesterday, uh, we had two psukim in uh, here, 24, um, psukim 19 and 20. Al tishar bamareim al tikane barashaim. Do not tishar, which we either said means to be assimilate with, compete with, or be jealous of evildoers. Al tikane barashaim, and do not be jealous of the wicked. Kilotihe acharis lara, because there will not be a lasting uh, outcome to evil. Ner rishaim yidach. The candle of the wicked will either flicker out, according to Matus uh, Sion, or will uh, be extinguished. Uh, I guess for lack of fuel, like uh, according to Rubino Yona. So our main questions were, what is the difference between the two halves of, of 19? If there's any meaning, is it just repeating itself or are these two different, um, you know, uh, injunctions? Uh, two, what is the nimshal of near Rishayim Yidach, of the candle of the wicked will uh, be extinguished or flicker out? Three, why is the muscle necessary? Uh, the rest of the puzzle is in plain language. So why is it, uh, you know, what is the muscle getting at here? Um, Four, what about the Rashaim would a person be jealous of? Five, what would cause or tempt a person to be tishar uh, bamareim, however you translate that? And six, what does it mean that there will not be a lasting outcome to evil? So we, uh, the first approach we took was basically saying a cliche idea, Mishlayak idea, which is that, um, you know, even though it looks like the wicked are succeeding, um, that's only in the short run. And if you understand how wickedness works, that they're essentially trying to like impose a view on uh, impose like a, uh, a, a false uh, structure onto, onto reality that, uh, that reality can't sustain. So you know that it has to collapse at some point. So you know that it's going to go out. So it only looks like, you know, like in tell them, it only looks like they're flourishing, uh, but really it's going to, they're going to be destroyed forever. But then the problem we have with that is first of all, that's an old idea. Secondly, why do you need the muscle of the nair for that? So this is what led us to Rabbeinu Yona, which I want to read again, um, even though I know it was long, but I want to read it again. And but this time we'll stop to like analyze it as we go. Um, so he says, So don't befriend the evildoers. So it means to befriend. Don't be jealous of Rashaim. So first he acknowledges our point. He's here. Many in many places he warns not to be jealous of the Rashaim, as it's written. Uh, don't be jealous of people uh, of um, evil men. My son, do not um, let your heart be jealous of sinners. Shlomo doesn't need to warn us to not be jealous of sinners and wicked to act like them. So this is his main theory here, which is he's warning a person not to be jealous of their tranquility and their wealth and their honor. Okay. So we're not talking here about telling you to keep away from emulating them. All right. So that's step one. So furthermore, he's not just saying, don't be jealous of wealth and honor. Okay. Um, rather, it's like this. Um, you should know that sometimes, um, sorry, Pamim Rabos, many times, So, in other words, uh, so it's not just that you're jealous of the possessions, it's that you want what the person gets from those possessions. So let's say a guy is rich, it's not just that you want the wealth, it's you want the, es the esteem that he gets from the wealth or the respect that he gets from the wealth. So you want it as his chalek. So the 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 test case here is that if you see a guy who is like afflicted with some sort of terrible disease and he's wealthy, um, you don't want his wealth because he's not getting the glory from the wealth. He's he's uh, he's not in an enviable state. So that shows you that it's not just the objects that you want. It's you want what he has, which encompasses the totality of his status or his like uh, circumstances, his success. So now 
in light of this, Shlomo is warning us to not glorify the Russia and to not let him seem like uh, fortunate in our eyes on account of the wealth or the honor that he has, because it rather should be to us like a golden ring in the nose of a, in the snout of a pig. Shlomo's hotter in, you know, that a pig with a golden ring in its snout is not going to be glorified uh, because of the of the ring. Um, so so too, libeno So too, someone who's covered in uh, in 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 you know uh, boils uh, and who's rich, we don't we don't yearn to be like that person. He's here. That's the essential intent in what he's warning us. Not to be jealous of the wicked, the sinners and the wicked. We should despise them. And uh, to degrade them in our in our mind's eyes. Uh, um, Oh, sorry. You didn't you, uh, you said that there's a comma there in yours? I forgot where the kiyu bali osher v'kavod. Oh yeah, meaning we shouldn't. Uh, we we should despise them uh, and, and degrade them in our eyes. Midatenu with the knowledge that ki lakala v'nechrata that it's going to end. V'ein haosher v'kavod hu yisron lahem, and this uh, wealth and honor is not a benefit to them. Zetam shi farish achre pasukaze, and that is what's going to be explained afterwards. So then he says. Their light is not because of their souls. Rather, their tranquility and their honor is like a, a lamp. Excuse me. Which will illuminate for a person. Uh, but it'll uh, cease when the, uh, the when its uh, oil ceases. So too, the wicked will get their fill. And then their good will will, uh, will vanish, will end. Yeah. Okay. So what's the what's the idea according to him? Uh, I think he, uh, like I said yesterday, I think he's saying something definite here. Um, I think. Yeah. Um, when people are jealous of other people oftentimes it's not that they say it's not that they're feeling like i want to have what the person is having it's yeah i want to be in that person's position right right yeah um and so when the person has something that, that you want but then also very undesirable like certain very un undesirable qualities like being covered in boils or something right um then um you people don't um aren't jealous of that person anymore because they say like oh I, like i i much prefer my my position than being in 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 that person's shoes right right so so the question is like let, let's compare this idea to the idea we had the cliche idea because um i'm not clear like i i'm clear on on what i think i'm clear on what ravina yona is uh saying but I'm not clear on um, on what this new angle is. Um, hold on, I just need to check this and see if this is Rav Reich. No, it's not. Okay, fine. Um, hold on, let me turn the phone on to uh, mute. Okay, um, what do you call it? Uh, yeah, what is this ad that we wouldn't already get from the don't be jealous of uh, of the wicked that we had from the Matutas uh, David? Other than like, I, you know, let me just clarify. This is a greater psychological insight, but at the end of the day, isn't it going to amount to the same thing? Like, I'm jealous of this person, and but if we know that like they're going to uh, ultimately be destroyed, which is the Rebbeinu Yonah's premise, that he doesn't even bother explaining. So then, what 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 do we gain in the power of don't be jealous of them of that tzivui, knowing this idea from the Rebbeinu Yonah? Well, I guess that's that kind of feels like looking towards the future, like. Like, oh, this is going to work out better for me than it is for him. Whereas uh -huh. this is, right now, he's in an undesirable position because he's going to flicker out. Right. Like, he's, like, um, like he's doomed. Mm -hmm. I hear that. I hear that. I'm just trying to think a little bit more here uh, about... And I, I still also feel like like um, we haven't fully explained the muscle of the Nair. Yeah, I'm not super enamored with what I'm saying. Okay, yeah. Um, let me think here. Uh, 
what this reminds me of, and I don't know if I'm just thinking about this because of the Nair muscle. Um, I'm thinking here of the, and I don't know if this is related. <laughs> okay, I could totally be projecting here, uh, but the halo effect, right? Uh, let me just look up a what Wikipedia says, halo effect. Um, see if I'm remembering this correctly. Uh, halo effect, sometimes called the halo error, is the tendency for positive impressions of a person, com brand, company, brand, or product in one area to positively influence one's opinion or feelings in others. Halo effect is the name given to the phenomenon whereby evaluators tend to be influenced by their previous judgments of performance or personality. The halo effect, uh, which is a cognitive bias, can possibly prevent someone from accepting a person, a product, or a brand based on the idea of an unfounded belief of what is good or bad. Okay, a simplified example of the halo effect is when an individual noticing that the person in the photograph is attractive, well-groomed, and properly attired, assumes using a mental heuristic that the person in the photograph is a good person based on the rules of that individual social concept. This constant error in our judgment is reflective of the individual's preferences, prejudices, ideologies, ideology, aspirations, and social perception. So like, I think the reason I was thinking about this is that this is the mistake that is being highlighted by the uh, the uh, gold ring and the snout of the pig example. That um, that no one would make the mistake of thinking that because this pig has a golden ring and its snout, then somehow the pig is beautiful. Um, rather, the gold is beautiful, but the pig is not. So so to hear the mistake is to think that because this this Russia has wealth or honor or tranquility, then that somehow is reflective of the overall person, that the overall person has something that is like desirable and, uh, and, you know, and, and valuable. And what, what this is saying is that because this wealth and see, I think you need both that. I think you need the idea that the Rashaim are going to flicker out, but you also need the idea of the light, meaning that, that if you saw, let's say, for example, you saw a, a candle uh, or not a candle, a, a, um, a lamp that had oil and it had a very bright flame, but you knew that there was very little oil left in it and it's only going to last for a few more minutes. So then you wouldn't, you wouldn't be tricked by the brightness of the flame. Um, so to, even though in other words, fl the flame is good. That's not what we're denying, but you're, you're, you're not making an inference about the, the lamp in, in its entirety based solely on the flame. So, so to here with the wicked, if you had, let's say, for example, a tzaddik who had wealth and honor and tranquility, that is something that you could be envious of based on this framework, because that is stemming from his, his good qualities and is made to last. You know, the tzaddik's, for example, tranquility stems from, from his inner state and his perfection, not just from his circumstances that he happens to be like ahead a, a right now, you know, or happens to be exerting his power. But with the wicked, then when you see the tranquility, you shouldn't assume that that is reflective of the, 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 the underlying state of their, uh, of their success. You know, it's really, it's really short lived. So it's trying to break that, that inference there. That's what I got right now. <laughs> that makes sense to me, I guess, like the, um, I guess, um, like when you're just looking at the fire yeah. itself, you say like, it's like a really bright fire. But when you, um, when you see that, when you're looking at the, at the fire in conjunction with the fact that it's going to burn out, mm -hmm. then you say like, oh, this is, it's like, like last flare up before it, before it goes. Right. Like, it, um, I think it like it redefines the way that you you also just like looking at the at the fire itself. Yeah, and I think that's why I liked the um, the Matus David's thing of it will flare up and out that like thorns that that in the case of the thorns, the fact that you're burning the thorns is what causes the extreme flare up, but then that's also what causes the fire to 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 suffocate itself. So with the wicked. Like that's like an intrinsic relationship that their their flare up of success is based on their wicked self assertion or their dominance or like these other things, and that itself is going to be the cause of them uh, flickering out. It's like a more direct idea than what Rubin Yona is acknowledging here than than just like running out of fuel. Um, let's look at the Miiri. I haven't looked at him yet, um, which I'll put up here, um, just because I haven't 
Let's see, Meiri. Okay, alt kind of tishkar be merim, alt kind of rishaim ki loti achiz the rod near the rishaim yidaf. Hey, ara laharchik mi chavras haraim. So he's also learning it for, uh, about friendship. Um, this is uh, telling us to distance ourselves from the friendship of uh, the wicked. Uh, evil doers um, um, so, um, so that's unlike Rabbi Yoni. He says you also shouldn't. Uh, it's telling us not to uh, emulate their actions. Well, Tiskar who hatachara So hara means to inflame or to burn. Um al That's weird. Don't heat yourself up and come to anger. Okay, I don't know what the relationship is between anger and uh, friendship with the wicked here. Uh, let's see where he goes with this. Uh, is there more Meiri? Yeah. Um, in regarding yeah. the evil... Is that part of the previous... Sorry, um, he... Was that part of the previous sentence? I thought so. Meiri, Kolomar altis chamin ba'atzmacha v'tavo lide kaas be'inyan hamareim lahamisacha. Does he mean that you shouldn't be angry at them when they try to kill you? Ladamos lehem b'masa to the point of trying to kill them. No, I think. Um, well, I mean, that's yeah. ultimately what he's going to say. Ladamos lehem b'masa alt kane b'hem lasos kamaseim. In other words, if they're trying to kill you. Don't get angry and feel like you should like um, you know uh, like retaliate in, in in kind you know by trying to kill them. Kiloti akris the ra. There's no outcome to ra. Rotalam la adam hara to a person who's evil. Kol ki kol hatslachaso eno ella la hatslacha medumis lo amitis. All of their success is just imaginary, not real. A kol yechal aviobad. Everything is going to be uh, uh, you know finished. And uh, and and end. Who amro nirushaim yidaf? That's what it means when it says the lamp of the wicked will be extinguished. Who mushal nefesh? That is a mushal for the um the soul. But tishar befelas tits tisgar. Who be patach? By roy lios bekamatz. Okay, fine. That's grammatical. We talk kaki each mefarshim also shu asid me binyan hakal v'sharasho tachar umin inyan haniskar gamkain. Okay, fine. That's another interpretation. Each mefarshim also me inyan me inyan. Mischare, Kamo, Ech Tishara as a Susim, Vuenin Hata Arov, his Arvus, Kloma, Altis Arev Bamarim, Lihidamus Lahem Bamasehem. Okay, that doesn't really help us so much. Um, what about the uh, who could we go to next? Um, let me look at the Rob Bog on uh, Torah. Rob Bog Altishar, Banashim Hamarim, Hamashkisim, his coat at Imahem. Don't try to quarrel with them. Pen Yashri Sucha, lest they destroy you. And don't be jealous of the success that they that the Rashaim find to be co- to covet to go after their ways. Kilotie Achris, because there's not going to be any uh, end. Bhashara Ishara, any remnant, Hisharus Ishara, any remnant for the evil man. Yeah, not anything new here. Should we do some Malvin? <laughs> Let's do Malvin. Okay, <laughs> we're desperate here. Altis kavim reim, alta kavim berushaim. Rotzalamar ki haroa es harushaim matslichem az. So someone who sees the wicked succeed, then o shemasim reim beena beena. So either their actions are evil in his eyes, beena makana behem lihios kamosam. He's not jealous of them to be like them. Of az yichar lo ahat slachasam. But he is angry at their success. Yisraim al she'en Hashem ma'anisham, and he's he uh, complains about the fact that Hashem doesn't punish them. Valze Omer al tishar. That's when it, why it says don't be angry. Rotzlemer al yecher alacha al hamireim v'hatzlachasam. Don't be angry about their success um, of the wicked, uh, uh, evil doers. Oh, she kind of behem, or he's jealous of them. V'yirtze lihios kamosim, and he wants to be like them. Alze amar al tkanah bershaim. That's why it says don't be jealous of the wicked. Kiloti achris lara. Okay, there will not be a, a lasting outcome for evil. Umafarish, and it explains, Bal tishar, don't become angry. Velo yiralach al hatzalachasam kilotiye lamareim acharis. Vi kablo onchem basof of acharisam kinechasa. So don't, if you're angry about their success, don't worry. They're not going to have a good end. They're not going to succeed. They're going to be cut off. Uvat kane al hatzalachasam ata, and don't be jealous of their success now. Ki ne'er rishayim ha-meir lahem, that which illuminates for them, rotzalam or hatzalachasam, meaning their success, yid ach, 
Eno near Meir. It is not a light that provides illumination. Rock do doich bekofets umiskabe. I think that's the flickering thing. It, it flickers and is ex, it extinguishes itself. Bechol rega at every moment. It's not a real success. And they're not tranquil or secure. So that's like you were saying, uh, I think someone was saying yesterday about how their success is um, is only external, but inside they have all these anxieties and turmoils and are worried that they're going to lose it. So that's why you shouldn't be jealous of them. So, I mean, I like what he's doing with the Pasuk. He's he's splitting the first thing into two uh, two reactions that you have when you see the wicked succeeding. Either either you... you, uh, you understand that what they're doing is evil, but then you're, you are angry at God because you feel like they're getting away with it. And therefore he's saying they're not getting away with it. They're going to be brought to, to destruction or you're jealous of them. And he's saying that they actually are not something to be jealous of because they're not actually internally experiencing what you imagine them to be experiencing. They're, they're really, um, uh, you know, um, uh, in a state of turmoil and anxiety and fear and all the other stuff. Uh, would you say those two things are related? Um, or are they the, two the, separate things? The, uh, the two um, things in Puzzle 20 or the two things in Puzzle 19? Uh, yeah, the uh, in 19, I think. The being yeah. jealous of them and yeah. the uh, thinking they're not getting punished. Yeah, I think that both of them reflect a... In other words, I think the person who actually understands... Like the actual tzaddik will not have either of those effects. Um, so I think they both stem from from ignorance about, I think they both stem from the fact that this success is, is uh, you think the success is real, but really it's imaginary, meaning you think that it's real in that it's gonna last, or you think that it's real in that they're happy, you know? Um, and I think this is pointing to two avenues that you can use to think about it. Um, so yeah, I, I, I think cool. that they are related, you know, that they're stemming from a lack of knowledge about what causes the Russia to have this apparent success or like, what is the success? Like, you know, I was watching in the, um, I mean, I know it's a drama, but I've been, you know, I, I really, I love and I advocate anyone who wants to watch good film and good psychology to watch The Crown, uh, the entire series uh, about the British royal family. But the most recent season was about uh, Princess Diana and, um, and Prince Charles and like, I, I didn't know this, uh, but I guess during their marriage up until their uh their their divorce then people assumed that they were happy simply because it was like this fairy tale marriage you know uh of this beautiful princess who was like uh, charismatic and and charitable and kind and all this other stuff marrying like the man who would become king and like any you know the, what the drama does a very good way of, of portraying is like how much like unhappiness and pressure and competition and 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 depression was going on behind the scenes and like that's the type of thing that i think it's talking about here of like you know th that's the mistake of don't be jealous of them is like the way that they're perceived externally like could have absolutely nothing to do with what's going on inside you know and it's just this mistake i mean it's a very avil like mistake the avil is the fool who takes things on their surface level and assumes that that is uh, indicative of reality, um, or the pessy where he thinks that what appears good actually is good, you know. Um, and like it's just a, a complete misunderstanding of of uh, uh, of what happiness is, <laughs> you know. Like as if happiness is a certain material circumstance, you know, rather than an internal state, you know. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, and then again, and then again, the, the God not punishing them and, and them getting away with it. That's a misunderstanding of the phenomenon of how they got the success. You know that that if you try to build your success on these like, you know, these uh, foundations of fantasy, uh, then it's going to collapse. Um, yeah. So does this satisfy our criteria of needing a chiddush? I feel like it does, even though it's not an extreme chiddush. I think I feel like the the, you know, when you look at Rashaim succeeding, if we take this as exhaustive, then there are two improper reactions that you can have is, is either anger that they're getting away with it or jealousy that it's actually good and something desirable. And this is it, by identifying these two avenues, then uh, you can, and, and, uh, and giving the refutation, 
then you can uh, you can guard against these things. You know, I feel like this pus- the, the way that Melvin is explaining it is more actionable than the the simpler cliche version of the idea that we got from the Mitsuda's David. Um, this is in the later section, right? This is like um... no, this is uh, uh, this is not in the later section. This is uh, in twenty four, and the later section starts in twenty five. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. See, it feels like it. It feels like it's in the later section. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I still feel like Rabbi Yonah is saying something else, but um, uh, maybe uh, I I also want to take a look at the other Mefarshim um, uh, during the um, uh, you know later on on Shabbos or something like that. Um, I just want to skim through this really quickly, see if anyone, even Kaspi, no, or even Kaspi, no, um, Moshe Al Shif, I don't really look at so much. Uh, um, oops. All right, so we should probably I should probably let you guys go soon so you can go to Rabbi Mark, which is here. All right, so if you think of anything else, let me know. Um, but uh, yeah, and so I guess let's, the plan will be to take up the other two near Sukim on uh, Wednesday and Thursday. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I have a methodological yeah, question. Sure. Um, so it's about how, like how quickly to go to Mafarshim. Um, yeah. So how quickly? I'm gonna to run. run. I gotta okay. Run. <laughs> See you later. Yeah. Have a good job. Have a good Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I think that has to do with your own. Uh, uh, estimation of how likely it is you'll come up with an idea um, on your own, uh, and like also a uh, thing of how impatient you happen to be with a particular pasuk, or like which a lot of times it's going to also have to do with like how much time you have allotted to yourself. You know, like um, like you know, in let's say in our average forty-five minutes here, I will often have to make a value judgment or I uh, make a snap judgment of do we want this to be a one-day pasuk or a two-day pasuk? And if we want it to be a one-day puzzle, then we'll spend the entire first time trying to get it on our own, and then we'll do Mufarshim the second day. But if we are at, like, halfway through the shear, and we're not coming up with anything, and we want it to be a one-day puzzle, then I'll go to the uh, to the Mufarshim then. So very okay. subjective factors, uh, and also relative to, like, your confidence and your own ability to get somewhere, you know? Yeah, okay. Yeah. All righty. All right. So, uh, have a good job. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Have a good job.